excess tires, 100% goggles, decal works, get data, and vertex pistol. On PulpMX.com, taking your calls and looking ahead to the races with your host, Steve Mathis. Yeah, welcome everybody, Fly Racing Moto 60 Show. We're live. Thanks for watching now. We put these on uh, on uh, YouTube since uh, the national started. It's been going well. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thank you for Fly Racing for supporting this show. Been in business for 25 years at Fly Racing USA on social media. Got some really, really cool stuff going on with those guys. And uh, a big uh, big blow to the Fly Racing family when Chance Hymas announced this week he's out with an ACL injury for the rest of the year. Bummer for him and the factory Honda guys. Ch- Chance had been leading some laps, really improving. But they still have RJ Hampshire. They still have Jose Boutron and many other racers wearing Fly Racing. So go to your local dealer, uh, pound on the counter, demand to see the latest from the folks at Fly Racing. The Formula Helmet's amazing. Zone Pro Goggle, uh, simply awesome, uh, as well as uh, whether it's Kinetic Mesh or the Evo or the Patrol Off-Road. They got it all, man, at Fly Racing, flyracing.com. Thank you to those guys. Uh, get uh, as well on board with us. Maxis Tires, Plum Creek Funding, Decal Works, Vertex Pistons, 100% all on board with us. Thanks to the folks at 100%. Pulp 30 is the code to save with those guys. That Jet Lawrence character, that's perfect so far. Yeah, he wears 100%. Uh, Cooper Webb, Aaron Plessinger, the star racing Yamaha guys. 100% Pulp 30 is the code to save with those guys on anything at 100%. So thank you for using that code. I've heard it's done well, and uh, we appreciate it. 702-586-7857 if you got something to talk about. We're Weege and uh, JT on the show today to uh, break down Red Bud. Um, sort of the halfway point of the series, I guess, round five of 11. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that, Red Bud. It's always a great race. And, of course, it's the uh, July 4th weekend as well. Uh, Working the cameras, coming in on Thursdays now, making $1 more than Tits Legendary. Z, Travis Marks. What's up, Marks? I don't ask for much. I'm a simple man. Yep. $1 more than Tits is all I need. Yep, that's fantastic. It's great to... Great to see you uh, in board, on yes, board, I should thank say. thank you for having me. Uh, we are giving away 100% goggles as well as a fly racing jump uh, backpack as well on the show today. Uh, again, Pulp 30 is the code to save with 100%. Thank you to the folks at Fly Racing. Let's, uh, let's get uh, Jason Wygant on as well uh, to, uh, to talk about uh, Red Bud. Thanks to the folks at Decal Works. Pulp MX 23 is the code to save with uh, Decal Works. Red Bull KTM Factory Husqvarna Off-Road. Uh, they've got it all. Sean, Ron, and everybody down there at Decal Works, they'll give you a proof uh, beforehand. They'll put all your sponsors right. They'll put all the logos on. They will do uh, the numbers how you like them. Uh, they can do anything for you. They've been in business for a long time at Decal Works, and uh, they do a great job. Pulp 23 is the code to save at decalmx.com. Pulp 23 is the code to save. Again, we got some lines open, 702-586-7857. But taking your calls over there in the corner, he had a week off, so you know he's probably feeling very rested. V! Tits Legendary Tits, what's up? Hello, Steve. Glad to be here. What's happening, man? I'm just another beautiful day, right? Yeah. Uh, golfing today? Yep. All right. Fantastic. Wouldn't happen any other yep. way. No. All, my life exists for golf. Do you do the front nine, come to the show, and then go do the back nine? Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh. I do 18, then the show, and then 18 <laughs> is what it is. Unbelievable. Yeah, accurate, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> I hope nobody in Vegas needs their concrete uh, taken care of because the man who takes care of concrete here is busy. I course. pay people to do that for me. Okay. All yep. that golf still shooting triple digits. <laughs> <Yep>. Unbelievable. <laughs> Let's, uh, can we get why get on the line? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, 702-586-7857. Uh, we have Jake online, too. What's up, Jake? Welcome to the Fly Race and Moto 60 show. Jake, you there? All right, Jake's gone. Um, let's go to David on one. David, what's happening? Okay, so I got a beef with my local track and pro track. Okay. So, Morocco's leap at, yeah. at, at Red Butt. Sometimes they make it easier to jump, sometimes they make it harder. And they also do this on a local level at, at regular practice track, like Bud's Creek. Sometimes they make these jumps are really tough, uh-huh. and I think it's dangerous. What is the what is the thinking behind changing the jumps up like well, that? Well, yeah, the thinking is just something new, something different. I'm with you on the leap, like – it, they beefed up the landing over the years. It's gotten a little sketchy. I think the perfect the perfect thing to do with the leap, in my mind, is to make it so that most of the top 250 guys can clear it and then all the 450 guys can clear it. That's a perfect leap in my eyes. Uh, they have not always done that that way. It's been dangerous. Uh, big landing. So I don't know why they do it. Um, 
David, I think it's just like just they get bored and they want to try something different, you know? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, doesn't make any sense. No. They make it dangerous. Doesn't it, make any sense to me. No. All right, man. Well, thanks for calling. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, all right, let's get to our first guest from Racer X Online. He's also the voice of the motocross series. Jason Wygant. What's up, Weege? Yeah. Big weekend coming up. I would have done the whole one hour shoot on this show. I've mean, got so much to talk about, but uh, I guess you're booting me for some guy named JT. Yeah, some guy. He, he says he's on TV too, but I don't know. Oh, whatever. Now yeah. there's one and only. Yep. Uh, Stu back this weekend? We got Stu back. Yeah. Stu will be going into the Red Bud Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. Uh, oh. Yeah. Now, I don't want people to be confused. There is a lap with legends at Red Bud, and Stu will be there to go in the Hall of Fame, but I don't want people to think that Stu is doing the lap because if he did the lap, I mean, would we even need to hold motos, or would people just come for that and then leave? <laughs> would Stu jump the leap, do you think, on his I, lap? He, he would have to. He would have to. He would have to do it. <laughs> um, and then that's it. The first moto would be like, where'd the fans go? I can't help but look at the list of legends that are doing the lap for the 50th mm. anniversary of Red Bud and, and think to myself, mm. well, they're all going to be there anyways. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a, lot of, uh, a lot of locally based riders and dudes who currently work for teams. Yeah, on the list. Or, yeah. or like Talon Volan, who is just going to be there for his son, Maximus. But, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. It what, is cool, though, 50 years. Yeah. I mean, my gosh, what isn't 50 years in this sport over the last 18 yeah. months? Everything's 50 years. No, it's, it's really cool to see. Um, it's a great track. It's the second best track of the series and the okay. best national of the year, you know, okay. all, all told, yep. like mm-hmm. uh, in my eyes. So it's a great race. Of course, mm-hmm. America's, Hall, America's independence. It's independence, yep. right? Is that what it is? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. It is. Yes. Dude, I'm really bad with holidays and uh, even Canadian ones. I don't know. I don't really. You don't even. Yeah, Thanksgiving, you're a complete joke with yeah, also. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Hey, so we did have a caller from David about the leap, and you probably heard me talking. That's my perfect idea of a leap. It hasn't always been that way, and I think the last couple of years it has not been that way, uh, but that's my idea of a perfect leap. Yeah, but I think that's pretty hard to. It's probably Tim Ritchie's goal, the track owner, also, but I think that's hard to. I mean, you're down to 3% if you're going to say we want it where eight of the 40 250s can do it, not 20 and not one. That's, that's pretty hard to get. Now, I happened to be on a call for TV purposes the other day. Were you on the call or no? No, you're no, not? I don't do the TV oh. thing. I was, on, oh. I was on TV last year, mm-hmm. and then they, okay. they just, yeah, it didn't happen. Oh, yeah. I just, I, sometimes I think you're on it because JT and I are there, but you're not. No, so I no, just noticed no. that, yeah. yeah. Um, Tim Ritchie was on the call for the TV crew, and he said, I think a lot of people are thinking the way they rerouted the track over there is going to make the leap way, way easier. But he said the corner before it is going to be a little bit off camber, so it's still going to be difficult, Okay. even though it's not a complete 180. Now it's just a 90, but he's, they're still trying to make it tough. But right. I always feel like, I mean, look, you put 10 more gallons of water in that corner at 11 a.m., and that might make the difference between a rut and getting through the corner right. Yeah. I, I, you can't pinpoint this stuff that well. No, no, you're right. But I, I don't yeah. like the the last few years. The landing has been really beefed up. I'm not a fan of that. Um, you know, just makes the penalty yeah. makes the penalty yeah. too much for for not being perfect on it. That's all. Yeah, I agree with that. It's kind of cool when riders do um, double that they can launch uh, like a single into the corner. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yes, I do feel like yeah. If you don't make it, we we've seen a couple of big crashes and a couple of bikes break. But I feel like the worst could happen and just just yeah. hasn't but man yeah yeah you're asking for it with that huge landing yeah it's a it's certainly iconic the parking lot jump yeah. everybody just the iconic. Park, <laughs> the parking lot jump i guess mike larocco is on the list he will be there now i will say this we have not seen mike larocco in public very often so no. that's a pretty cool thing for the 50th no, I, I caught up with him on a podcast maybe i don't know six months ago yeah. or whatever it was yeah. uh, it was easy to arrange but mike was yeah mike well my, he has nothing to do with the sport anymore you know so nope. Uh, so that'll be, it'll be good to see him. Uh, always, uh, yeah. always like the Rock. Low key funny. funny guy. Low key funny. Yes, people because he's Iron Mike or yeah, an animal, yeah, whatever. Yeah, he yeah. seems yeah. super serious and intimidating, but no, he he'll laugh at himself. He's actually quite sarcastic. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Let me talk to you because you're also the amateur expert at Racer X. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, combine from it. Combine this weekend. Uh, it's tomorrow at the at the race and. Um, um, yeah, what, what are these things working? Do you like it? Is it interesting? Is there, is there any subplots to this one that uh, we want to be watching? Well, um, for one thing, Dax Benick is actually going to race the Pro National yeah. instead of the Combine. So I think a lot of people were looking at Juju or Julian Beaumare, Daniel Blair's recruit, 
with Orange Brigade against Bennick like they had built up in the Supercross Futures, but Bennick is now going to use this as one of his three pro races he can do. I know you probably want to go off right now if this yeah, rule exists, it's, but it's unbelievable. there it is. But, yeah. um, so that takes away someone, but I haven't even looked at that list yet to know who else is, is in because I, I didn't know about the Bennick thing until like Tuesday, so I'm like, oh, I better check this out. Okay. As far as are they working, yeah, I almost feel like they're working too well. You know, this is what this is what we're up against. The teams always want what's best, always, right? I mean, a lot of these ideas, the starting greats, that comes from the teams. You know, they want greats. You know, we've talked about this. They don't want to set up a bike half the year on metal and half the year on dirt. What's better? Greats. Okay, it is better. Is better better? I don't know if better is better, but they always want better. What's the best way? for them to scout and see who's a good rider and also develop the riders they already have. Have them race at a track where they're already there on the exact tracks that they would race on as pros. So we give them some supercross races, yep. we give them some motocross races. They're always going to vote for that. They'd probably vote for doing 17 supercrosses and 12 nationals or more than we're even doing right now. I feel like it's hard to hold the floodgates back. It's, I understand, you know, in Europe they do this, right? They have an EMX series. But at some point, I'm like, well, now we're just the amateurs just do what the pros do. So what even makes them amateurs anymore? Well, they can race the nationals, too, Weege. Well, that's why that rule is there. It's the same reason. They're just like, hey, you know what would be great? If we could just have them do exactly what the pros do. But then I'm like, yeah, but the, what what is even not amateur anymore? I, I, so, I'm with you. I, and, and, yeah. and then also, yeah. you know, again, like. Getting into the school thing. You, you can't go to school as, a, as an amateur anymore. There's more and more events that they're making you do. I mean, it used to be Ponca, Loretta's in the summer, go to school, be a normal human, come race Ponca, come race Loretta's, and, and then off you go. But they've yeah. added, they've added yep. so many amateur races. Going to school is impossible. So you're homeschooling. You're on track It's schooling. not the racing, though. It's not the racing. I would say that today's amateurs race less than they ever did. Um, part of the reason they have a combine and supercross futures is to make the kids have to race. You know, they used to, most kids, you know, when you go back to the eighties and nineties, you just raced locally every weekend and you chased who was the local fast guy. What tracks he going to? I'm going to go there. I mean, you can ask tons of guys. Yeah. Used to, these guys used to race 40, 50 weekends a year. Now they probably race 10. The reason for the no school is no one's just riding out of the garage. You, you are working with a trainer at a facility all year long. That's why they have to do the virtual school or the homeschool. Well, but and I don't know how you put that back in the box because no, that's you Monday don't. through Friday. Who yeah. can stop it? You can't. It's it's done. It's, yeah. it's out of the box. Right. Um, you could have one amateur race per year total, no other races, and they would still drop out of school. But we to we have the, all year for that. Yeah, but we have the uh, the select six now. We used to have two in the summer. Now we have six or whatever. No, the number. reason they have select six is because at one point it was getting to be like twelve, and the team said, "Hold on." Yeah, we're not going to have fifty-two big races a year. Somebody name the ones we have to go to because it yeah. got to ten, and then it got to twelve. So they actually have fewer than they did since they named the majors. There's fewer than there were before that. It was to try sure. to rein it in and be like, only go to these five. Yeah, you got uh, forty-eight other weeks of the year. You can do whatever you want. No, but I, I what get are they going to do? They're going to ride and train. I get it, but they are joining yeah. school, and they've made it more serious and stretched out. That's all. Is but they, it's better than it was. Sure, okay, I get it. I'm yeah, fine it with. Is. I'm fine yeah. with the select five or six, but right. it used to be just two in the summer. But yeah, you weren't. We're not getting this. This out of. We're not getting this toothpaste back into the tube. We're just not. No, and what I've learned the hard way is, I didn't realize. I only know this sport for now. But as my kids get older, I'm learning, oh, this is just how every sport works. More specialized. Move, yes. yep. everything. You, you, play, you play whatever sport you're doing year-round. You move to whatever state you need to move to to do it. And you're 24-7. And, you know, for some sports, you're lucky it's a school sport, so you are integrated in. But we are not the only one where virtual and homeschooling is becoming the thing. And like you said, I don't know how you put that toothpaste nope. back in. The problem is you... You are, it is, this is all great for the high end of amateur racing. If you want to develop talent, you let them ride the pro tracks. I totally get that. The problem is, where does the hobby dude go? Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. My next question about the combine was, is this thing still invite only? Uh, I believe there's a way to earn your way in okay. with the results at like Loretta's or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But this is the, this is, I've heard many people say that it should be invite only. The, it should be the elite of the elite. I mean, we had Chad Reed as a coach for years, and he always endorsed that. He's like, 
it should be for the best of the best. That's the whole point. And I'm like, I, is it? I don't know. Um, I don't, I, in my mind, yeah. it's not. I, I don't like the fact that no one can just go race an MXGP. I mean, they have some wild cards, but basically yeah. you've got to be on a team to go race it. I don't like that. I like the fact that maybe there's some kid that has no money from uh, East Lansing that can show up at this combine and, and open some eyes. That's the idea, right? All the managers are watching. So Yeah, it, yeah. it is. So it, it, you'll be surprised. I mean, we, we'll talk about, like, Deegan last year won it. But as I always say, everybody watches the winner. They're not watching the dude in 15th. There are lesser-known, yeah. lesser-supported riders in this. You can't have 100 riders either. But uh, yeah. for sure, I guess I'm going to get back to my overall point. Yep. This is better, but I'm not sure that better is always better. Does well, that make sense? I, I'm... If you want the best way to develop a NFL quarterback, you would let the college quarterbacks play in some NFL games. That would result in better quarterbacks. <laughs> I'm with you. Like, I get it, man, because, like, I, you know, if I'm a manager, we've seen a number of amateurs flame out. And if you're an amateur manager, if you're a manager, I should say, watching yeah. amateurs ride the national track in 20 minutes in the same weather is you're great. More. Is great. You do. You're, it is better. But, yes. But, yeah, but what but point? What cost? Yeah, what point? Yeah. Are, well, and again, we let them race the pro races. Like, I just, mm-hmm. that blows me away. I know we used to do that back in the day. I get it. In the 80s yeah. and 90s, it used to happen. I get it. Yeah. But at this point, they're making six figures, these top amateur guys. They're making six figures. They're they're not going to school. They're at training facilities. They're, they're yeah. literally one step away from being a pro, except now we're letting them be a pro and just dive back into amateurs. Like, everything has gotten more, more specialized, more tip of the spear, and yeah. now we're actually letting them race nationals. Like, I don't know, man. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And a lot of these things, by the way, the reason the team suggested this is because nobody knows more than them how many flamed out. How The teams know how much money they spent on amateurs that didn't work out. Yeah. So they're just like, we need to solve our problem. And the better way to do it is let us watch them race on real tracks so then we'll know yeah. who to actually yeah. Yeah. sign. So I get where they're coming from. But it comes with side effects. Well, again, you're going to let these teams, they're all just going to do their own self-interest, just like the greats and just like so many other yeah. things. Like, you got to talk to your partners, and you got to listen to your partners. I yeah. get it. But at some point, these guys are going to be, they're just looking after themselves and trying to make it easier on themselves. So how about this? How about you just scout better riders? How about Tyler Keith <laughs> telling me a couple years ago that why don't we just wait till another team spends hundreds of thousands of dollars on a kid and then sign them after two years? You know, which I'm like, yeah. Like great idea. So, well, if you're if you're paying really close attention to amateurs, and I know you're not, that no. is actually happening. Yeah, the 85 ranks and super mini ranks don't have factory talent like, like probably yeah, like it's never done. I mean, we can all go back to the Buddy Antonez days. Yeah, Daniel. Days. Daniel said the same thing to me the other week. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and the five year guaranteed contracts for 13 year olds—that's pretty much all gone. Yeah. So it has changed. Yeah. Um, but you got to wait four or five years to see that cycle through. But sure. you're not seeing that. Uh, uh, race to the bottom like it used to be. Okay, let's talk about Redbud a little bit. Speaking of of Bennett, uh, where do you where do you slot him in? Like he's pretty special from what I hear. Uh, I was giving Daniel the the gears for letting him go. Um, <laughs> uh, it sounds like the, the the family really bet on themselves with this star deal and it's worked. Um, where do you slot him in? Like is he? You know, Deegan and Hymas were eight, nine, ten. Uh, is, you think he can do that? No, not quite, because this class is freaking deep, man. And I don't want to put anyone in the Deegan standard right now. And Hymas did get to that point, but he did race, again, a few of these last year yep. and the Combines the last two years. And this was, you know, high point, his fourth national was his best. So that's a lot of development that Hymas is getting in the last 18 months that Bennick is only just starting. And the 250 class is gnarly, man. Like, especially yep. with a couple dudes coming back. We got Hamaker back, Justin Cooper's back. Jet Reynolds is back. Um, Caden Broswell is still there. He didn't, you know, his deal was extended. I mean, you got to have a grade and a curve here. If he goes 12 12, that's actually damn good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I sure. hope people don't look at that and say, like, this yeah. kid sucks, but right. it's hard. Right. Okay. So Top you, 10 is so hard right now. Um, yeah. Also, uh, news this week about Hymas ACL tear. Man, the kid mm-hmm. was leading laps. He got on the podium at Lakewood, really starting to gain some confidence. This sucks. Poor, poor chance, Hymas. Yeah, but I'm not as bummed as um, – they're much more – after we just said how they develop their riders, they're much more long-term. It's not going to matter in the long term. Yep. They're very patient. They got him on the right program. I mean, he's down there with the Lawrence brothers. Um, this is just a bump in the road. And okay. the ACL thing, they've got that dialed too. So, bummer yeah. at 
small picture, but I don't think it's going to matter. Well, if he, if he was RJ, he'd be jogging next week. You yeah, know, you know, so. right. It's true. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, sounds like Cooper Webb will be out for this weekend. Um, Wait, what? Yeah. I know this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh. you saw I was me. wondering why. I heard you rooting around looking for information. Right. That's, that's, why, that's why I was doing that. Um, oh. What happened? I don't even know. Just crashed, I heard, and banged himself up. Nothing serious. Oh, so. Jeez. But Sexton. 450, 450 class 2023. Catch the fever. Yeah. Sexton is back. So, um, yeah. do you expect just, and I'm not even going to say beat the Jet Kid. That might be too much to ask. Do you, do you just see 2 2 and Jet winning, or do you see war- better than that or worse than that? I, I, see, I see just 2 2, you know, maybe cruising behind Jet. Man, I got to be careful here because everything we say is like, dude, we're just guessing. We don't even know what level of prep no, Sexton we, has. I don't know if he's. I mean, why do you got to be careful? Why, is somebody going to get mad at you? Oh, yeah, it doesn't happen. So <laughs> this is a perfect example of how we all get in trouble. Okay. We're just guessing here, right? I have no idea if Sexton's been writing for three weeks or three days or right. three hours or right. not at all. Right. So if he goes out there and one ones it, does that mean the haters and the doubters are out there saying, well, we, we have very little information. Now, we'll get a lot more. He'll be there for press day tomorrow, and yeah. then we'll know for sure. So for me to guess right now, I mean, yes, beating Jet seems a little crazy, Uh to beat someone who's 8 no when you haven't raced for a month yep. seems a little crazy. So, yeah, I'll just slot him in 2-2. Two, two. How about that? Okay. Yeah, like just, yeah, based on what you right. think. Yeah, I, I think he's better yeah, than those yeah. other guys. I'll tell you what. Cooper, well, yeah, but if yeah. Miranda's goes 2-2, two, two, then I guess I'm a hater and a doubter. Uh, I mean, hater why? And a doubter. <laughs> right. I, I mean, you got to block that out, man. You just got to. <laughs> um, I've been – we talked about this on a fantasy show – and I'm going to include Coop in this, even though he's out for this weekend. I believe he's out for this weekend. Oh, wow. Um, mm-hmm. I've been really, I guess the word is unimpressed, and I would tell Coop that or any of these other guys. I've been a little unimpressed that none of these guys seem to be, like they all had reasons for starting slow, the Nationals. I get it. But we're yep. four rounds down. It's still really inconsistent. I mean, AP in the high point wasn't good. And Coop was okay, and Dylan's been up, and, like, none of these guys seem to be anywhere near, you know, a consistent podium dude where you're like, oh, yeah, that's, that's this guy. I mean, they, they're all over the place. Well, yeah, let me stop you right there. Here's the perfect example. You, I could be a hater or a doubter or be wrong. I did not think that Ken Roxon on a Suzuki, on a Suzuki model and team he had never ridden motocross before, off the couch, not really prepared, right. was going to be – Way better than all those dudes. I, I did not either. No, I did yeah. not. And I know that the high point track lends itself to Ken's strength, but 35 plus 2 is 35 plus 2. To not be prepared, have no testing basically at all. And I know everybody says it's the same. It's not the same bike that he rode in 2016. It's not the same bike. Suzuki did change it in 2018. To just be way better than those guys, that's your, that's your line in the sand right there. Yeah. No, I, um, I'm with you. I would think in a normal year that Plessinger wouldn't be like, I have absolutely nothing. I cannot touch Ken Rossin, <laughs> even in a normal year. I mean, Kenny told us he's off the couch. Kenny told us he had two hours or something on on riding yeah. outdoors. Yeah, like yeah. Is Ken Rossin a higher level talent outdoors than than I guess Webb and Plessinger? Yeah, but like not to the point where he should have zero prep and just blow their doors off. But that's pretty much what happened. Yeah. No, I I, yeah. I, I, I I'm with you, and I, and I keep you know like Coop jumped in late and AP, yeah. I, I, Dylan. Isn't happy with his body. I get, I get the, I, 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 I said the first three rounds. Yep, get it. I get it. I understand it. I'm not, yep. you know. But we're yep. at round four, and these guys are all over the map still. So yeah, you got Ty Masterpool just catching and passing these dudes. You got yep. March Banks. I, I just, I'm kind of like, hey, you guys, you guys are Supercross and Motocross champions. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> um, the one guy I'm holding out for here is Ferrandez because I do believe, I mean, we're, we're not far removed from it. He's only two years removed from being as good as anyone. He's yeah. not a secondary guy, a second-tier guy. Yeah. We haven't quite seen 450 outdoors. You can say where Plessinger or Webb are as good as anybody on the track. They haven't quite been there 450 motocross. They were yeah. in their 250 days. Yeah, Ferrandez, you know, if he, he's not hurt, maybe, you know, his level should be as good as Chase Exton. Should be. So maybe it's still coming. His second moto at High Point, underrated, was really good. Yeah. So maybe yep. they're getting somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Uh, 702-586-7857.
Uh, give us a call. We're giving away a set of 100% goggles and a jump backpack from the folks at Fly Racing. Uh, Maxxis Tires. Shop.maxxis.com. Uh, new tires uh, developed with uh, the expertise of seven-time Supercross champ Jeremy McGrath. They got two new tires, soft intermediate, intermediate to hard terrain, and uh, Alex Ray running these tires out there in the mm-hmm. Nationals, you know? Oh, yeah. Really testing the grip out. So. Oh. Yes. Maybe that's why he rides the way he does. It's on purpose to test the tire. <laughs> Maxis.com, shop.maxis.com for more information. Uh, Shad's on one. Uh, what's up, Shad? What's your question, man? Hey, I had it about a uh, Benick, but you guys oh. do such a good job. You, act, you answered everything I could, you know, have asked. <laughs> yeah, well, so. we each, we'd said 12-12-ish. So. <laughs> yeah, 12-12, oh, right. okay. All so right, when he, he goes 8-8, eight, 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 prove me I'm 12, a hater. Your handicap's what? I don't know what his handicap is. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, there ain't one on the side. That's what I was Yeah, curious. well, we don't got the entry list until today. So, what's that, Weege? Um, would we be allowed to do this? Huh. If we predict someone's going to do something and they do worse, can we go on Instagram and then say they did worse? Oh, than yeah. Predicting? Yeah, I would, I, can I we would, do that? I would love that. I would love to, oh, to do okay. all that. When, when, when the people on Instagram tag me in somebody's that they, they, they did better than I said or whatever – I'd love to just yeah tag the rider when, when they do work. Yep. Can you do yep. that? Yep, I think I, I think you can. Oh yeah, and it should go over fine, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> thanks, Chad. Thanks for the call, man. Hey, thank you. Thank yep. you. Appreciate it. Uh, Flyracing uh, dot com. Please check it out. Okay, um, March Banks second. Um, cool. That was great, and even in the second moto, you know, pulling the mechanics area, pulled back out, got us up to eighth. Like, is he? Is he a master pool level guy, or is he the same as master pool? Is he better than master pool, or is he going to even be better than that? Like, where where do you think March Banks should slot in here? Well, a couple of things here. First of all, let's not forget that master pool is the master of red Bud. Yeah, I mean, yep. even in his worst years, he absolutely kills it at this track. I actually talked to uh, his dad Jerry yesterday for an interview for the magazine for Racer X. And he's like, we need to prove that we're not just Red Bud. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know. You know. <laughs> um, so he's been this good. Like, I would not at all be surprised to see Master Pole Podium this weekend. He has been really? outrageous. Really? Dude, he's yeah. been outrageous at Red Bud. Okay. He's already flirting podium the last two tracks. He's usually awesome here. If he's a fifth and sixth place guy, why can't he be a third place guy? I would not be surprised. That's how good he is at this track. Beyond that, I do think consistency-wise, Mark Banks – just from being on a, a real team and not just a privateer team, because yeah. he's tough, those privateer guys. But the problem with March Banks is, didn't he tell you, or tell somebody at their high point, it's basically the only good start he's gotten in his life, basically, yeah. outdoors, yeah. and he got a second. If he could fix that, um, which is a big if, and by the way, yeah, he's so heavy, he's so huge, he's on a 250, just get him on a 450. His starts weren't good all year last year on a 450 outdoors either, so I don't know if the fix is coming. That's the problem. I think he could be just as good and maybe even more consistent than Master Pool, but not if he starts 30th most motos, which is usually what he does. Yeah, um, it's been tough. You would think that the grades would help him a little bit because there's something from Supercross. He did pull some yeah. starts in Supercross on a 250. We've seen it. Not always, but some of them. Yeah. And maybe that would help, but it doesn't appear so so far for him. Um, our guy, Philip, his return mm. couldn't have been any better to listen to on the pulp show absolutely <laughs> amazing getting towed on an atv through vendors row with people yelling philip and then getting the last spot in but yeah 38th gate pick 12th place in the first moto uh what, he ran a little higher than that even at one point um i i think our guy philip can go 10 10 8 8 8 9 10 somewhere in there dude I thought that was really good, actually, because, I mean, this was a little earlier, I think, than he expected to come back at high point. I think it was probably aiming for Red Bud. Uh, And then the way the qualifying was a disaster and the gate pick, um, I was like, man, what if Phil comes all this way and doesn't get any points? And he might have even done the same in Moto2. He was in that spot, but he crashed. So I was like, okay, he's not out of it. He's not way off the back. So I thought that was pretty good. Hopefully, with the week off, he's even better. The weekend off, he's even better. But I was like, well, this is the bottom for Phil. Like, the, the base level first moto back is like 11th, 12th-ish. Yeah. That's pretty much right on point. Yeah. Yeah, kind of, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, so do you think 8-8? Eight, eight? Do you oh. think, you know, better than that? Well, you got Sexton and Anderson back. I yeah. guess we're going to have Webb out. But, yeah, I don't know. To jump 
significant positions. Oh, actually, the guy he battled last week was Harlan. No Harlan. Right. No uh, Roxon because of uh, World Supercross. Yeah. All right, fine. Let's let's just say tenth for Phil. Let's right. go ten ten. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good point. Uh, those guys are yeah. gone. And Anderson. Yeah. JT and I differed a little bit. Imagine that on the uh, fantasy show on where he sees Anderson. Where do you where do you see him? Well, um, I I can only go to you. I mean, we did these motocross preview videos for Racer X, uh-huh. and you said. The day Barsha and Anderson show up, they're immediately ahead of Plessinger. So is that true? <laughs> and that's what you said. Y- yeah. They slot I, right well, in ahead of them, just right there. I think they do, right? I, I'm asking you. Well, okay, so you're sticking with that. I'm sticking with that, but I did get a little worried that he said uh, not much time on the bike or three days on the bike or something, Jason said on Soul Show. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but but yeah. it seemed like he's coming in a little Kenny-ish, underprepared. Yep. You know? Yeah, Kenny's just such a ridiculous talent that it's. I, I don't want to compare anyone yeah. to that. I still am shocked that he, even with that, beat these other guys at high point. I'm sticking with what I said at the beginning of the show, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it could be tough on Anderson. Okay. I don't, I don't want to just assume he's last year's Jason Anderson on day one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fly Race and Moto 60 show. Plum Creek funding. Whether you're uh, looking to buy a house, whether you're looking to. Uh, be an investor if you have a vacation home like Wygant. Plum Creek Funding oh, yeah. has prog- programs that suit your needs. If you already own a home looking to pull cash out, contact a professional with over 25 years of experience. 12 different states uh, Zach can do now at Plum Creek Funding at Z-A-C-H at PlumCreekFunding.com. <coughs> contact him. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm getting choked, choked up at your vacation. Well, yeah, when I start talking about borrowing money, I feel the same way. <laughs> right. 720 212 Four six eight five uh, Zach at PlumCreekFunding dot com. Uh, Amber's on one. Uh, Amber, uh, what's going on? Yeah. Amber, you there? Yes. Yep. All right. Good. Good talk, Amber. Uh, Scott, what's happening? Scott, you there? Hey, you guys, hear me? Yeah. Hello. What's happening? Hey. Uh, question: Suspension, chassis related with the KTM. So I know we're trying to get more what flex and comfort out of these things. KTM sometimes does their running change, what, mid-year, and calls them half-year models. Yeah. Are there going to be any frame changes, or are we sticking with 48s and doing that that setup? Um, yeah, Kiefer seemed to say that the works edition, that's what they call it? No, they don't call it works edition. Factory, Factory. edition. Factory, Factory, Factory edition yeah. uh, will be out sometime soon, and it'll be the mm-hmm. model year, like the change of the model year. Whether they get on it or not, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, Um, But you know, it does seem. It does seem like these guys. You know, that they really like that 48 uh, fork and coupes on a production-based shock. Even so, they're trying to get more flex into that frame, which is steel, which we know flexes more than aluminum. But now I'm thinking that that thing might be stiffer than an aluminum chassis. Yeah, we've gone too far, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it Um, seems that way, right? Uh, one more, if you got time. Yeah. Uh, PC Cowie, your uh, your shipmate captain over there at Vital, that made a comment what last week or two weeks ago that they might be switching suspension manufacturers. Is there anything to that? I have not heard that. Um, yeah. Weech, you All hear right. anything about Whoa, that? that? That would be big, yep. especially for that team. I mean, a lot of show. Well, that's what I was thinking. If you buy it, it show up even or, goes through pro or, yeah. yeah, that would be really big uh, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I haven't heard anything. But, I mean, look, the guys, the, 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 the rap on that – that stuff for a long time has been very rigid. Clamps haven't changed. Everyone had to run the twin wall until recently, you know, so maybe they're looking for a bit more chassis stability, yeah. Yeah, seen yeah. other changes from them lately. So Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe they, c- mine, they could, they, they could be opening anyway, their cool, eyes. Anyway, cool, thanks, guys. Yeah, thank Keep you, man. Up. Appreciate it. That would be a big one, yeah, because they, they sell it. Amber, you're back. Amber, you're back. Hi, I'm We're back. Trying. Yep. yep. Hey. Hi, what is Cooper Webb's injury? Uh, I don't know. I just heard he crashed. Uh, I was trying to get to the bottom of it. Weege was witness to that, but I got shot down by Phil. But uh, I don't think it's anything serious from what I hear, Amber. Okay, that's good news, then. Yeah, it, it should be good news. Uh, do you want a pair of 100% goggles? I would love one. All right, stay on hold. We'll get them to you. Thanks for calling, Amber. Appreciate it. Ride100percent.com. Pulp30 is the code to save. Uh, Jordan's got a question for Weege. Jordan, welcome to the show. What's your question for Jason Wygant? Hey, my question uh, was about Tomac's year. Um, typically, Tomac, you know, he's not really a guy that crashes or tips over, but 
this year it just seemed, I mean, he had that thing at A1, came back and still won. Uh, there was another race where he crashed going over the tunnel, cartwheeled on that step on, and it just seemed really uncharacteristic. And I just wanted to see what you guys thought about him hitting the ground so much this year. We well, I'll de- I'll, that. that's a great question. I'll defer to Stu here. Stu talks about this quite a bit on his podcast. And he thinks that, you know, he wasn't quite where he was on the new Yamaha where he was last year. And their fix for that was to just run everything really soft, which is good. It masks a lot of problems and it's good 90% of the time. But as Stu says, when you do get into trouble, when you do make a mistake, it's way less forgiving. Um, and he Stu yeah. even thinks that's part of the reason he had the Achilles problem. Now that's, that's still a rando injury, but as far as the extra impact, he's like, but when he gets it a little wrong, you know, then the bike bottoms and then you got problems. It masks problems on a lot of other tracks. So right. Stu thinks I'll just go with him. They ran the bike extra soft this year as a baseline to just get through this season on this bike until they really dial it. And it's good most of the time, but when it goes bad, it goes extra bad. Um, I, I mean, if, you, if okay, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say that's, I mean, that actually kind of makes sense if you, you, you know, you go back and look at those crashes, you know, like that one over the bridge at A1. I mean, just the way it happened, I mean, right. it does look like a soft issue. So I, I ran that theory up to somebody that would know, and they, they said that's not true. So, the stew theory. Yeah, the stew theory. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, you know, hey, like, you know, Stu's got a pretty, you know, keen eye for stuff. So, yeah, not quite there yet. Uh, but that's that's I was told that that's not yeah not. Oh, actually. so you knew about this one, Steve, or yeah. did you hear about it from other sources? No, I heard it. I heard it. I heard about the Achilles thing. James said he runs his stuff too soft, and it could be a reason why he's tore his Achilles. And I'm like, what? Like he downsided that thing perfectly, almost. You know, um, yeah. it wasn't a gnarly overjump or anything. But like, yeah. So I don't know. I, I kind of asked somebody. Um, all right, thanks, man. Appreciate the call. Right. Thank you. All right, we each uh, before we let you go and get JT on here. Uh, give me your winners for this weekend. Um, man, I think I'm going to go with Hunter and Jet Lawrence. How about that? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yep. Um, well, Thank you. listen, you, you could go RJ. He's really good here. It's true. RJ has managed to crash, but also win everybody. But he's definitely not not crashed. Yeah. But he's also managed to crash and win. And <laughs> I do look forward to his Sexton wins, just the, the post- Maybe not even by him, but maybe by Sexton fans about the haters and the doubters. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't pay too much attention to that. But did you? I don't know if you read my observations column last week, but I said put Hampshire's high point into a time capsule. Oh, yeah. And great. 30 years from now, if you want to know about R.J. Hampshire's career, <laughs> so good. watch the two motos. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep, that's everything you need to know. It's eh, great. Everything you need yeah. to know from R.J. Hampshire, the, the, uh, the start, the speed, the crash, the saves. The, the dumb move, yeah. all of it. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Shimoda actually won uh, Red Bud last year. Now everything is with an asterisk because Jet's bike blew up in Moto 1. Yeah. And then he completely destroyed everybody in Moto 2 just to show everybody what's up. Yeah. But Shimoda did win at Red Bud before. So yep. the numbers show that he could be good here. Yeah. All right, yep. man. Well, so you're going to go with the Lawrence brothers. Good to know. Okay. Yep. I'm just a hater on all 39 other guys <laughs> in the gate. All right. Thanks, yeah. man. Appreciate it. So, yeah. Thank yep. you. Uh, all right, everybody, that's uh, that's Jason Wygant from uh, from uh, Racer X, and he's the voice of the series. Speaking of the voice of the series, Jason Thomas. What's up, JT? That's not me, but uh, I will, uh, I am, uh, I'm happy to be a part of the broadcast team. How about that? Okay, there we go. Yeah, uh, back with Stu this weekend as well. We just telling yeah. us. So. Yep, Stu's um, back. I'll just, go, I'll just start with this. Are you going to the Lawrence Brothers going to win this weekend? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, all I right. am. I, uh, <laughs> I I really like to take risks and step out on a limb, make my picks. You know, very unpredictable. Yeah, as much in much in the vein of your approach to these as well. Yeah, um, but yes, yeah, yeah I'll go take a little risk. Get okay, a little crazy on the Fourth of July and go yeah. Orange Brothers. You could go RJ for Red Bud. You could yeah, go RJ. I, I yep. considered it. I yep. considered. It. I think he's uh, the second most likely winner. Uh, what do you do? You think Justin Cooper? Uh, pretty serious injuries. Cause him to miss high point was a little scary. Where do you put him at? Do you think he's a, a top three guy like usual, qualify fastest, all that, or do you think he will be hurt a little bit? It's going to be interesting because to me, it's just is he rusty or not? Um, you know, he's only ridden once that I know of. Uh, maybe maybe rode again after that. But you know, if, if he comes out and he feels fine, you know, taking ten days off the bike is not a huge deal. I just yeah. don't know where his health is. Right? There's 
to me, there's a big difference between, yeah, man, I think I can race and I'm going to, I'm going to go for it versus coming in where he was coming into that qualifying session at high point. You know, those are two very different conversations. So yeah. uh, if, if anybody told me, I know exactly how it's going to go. I would say you're a liar. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. think that's true. Um, so We'll see how it goes. I hope for the best for him because he adds a lot to the series. But and, and obviously we saw how great he can ride this racetrack at Motocross Nation. But I, I truly think it's kind of a wait and see on him. Right. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we still got the Fly Race and Jump backpack to give away. 702-586-7857. Thank you to the folks at Get, by the way. Speaking of Jet and Hunter, using the uh, Get ECUs, using the data loggers, using the RPM dashboards, and uh, absolutely crushing it. Uh, out there with the folks, folks that get two-stroke and stroke, four-stroke stuff. Email us using the contact form on Pulp MX. We'll pass it on to Dan at Get and give you a Pulp Show deal. Uh, bummer deal for Fly Racing's Chance Hymas JT. Uh, but ACL stuff is, you know, it's not it's not at all that long of a wait now. I mean, if you're RJ, you're jogging in two weeks. Um, but, you know, he should be fine. Weege was saying he'll be fine. But real bummer for Hymas because he was coming on. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, there's there's no other way to put it now. You know, it's, it's as far as, like, the course of your career at 18 years old, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, he'll be back, and, yeah, and yeah. he'll be fine. And in a few years, he won't even know that he had done it. But, yeah, it's, uh, I think the most disappointing is, is right when he was getting momentum. You know, he's really coming into his own. He had the best weekend he's ever had. You know, he led a lap. He set the fastest lap time in Moto2. Like, there was a lot there yep. to take as positive. So. Yeah, there's there's two ways to look at it. You can be devastated that man, I just was kind of catching on, or you can look at it and say, yeah, this really sucks, but man, look at how much progress I had made, and I just got to get back to that point. And we know whether it's you or your family, or more, maybe more importantly, the brass at Honda HRC, that he is capable. Like yeah. he showed them enough, in my opinion, to see that he can get it done in that class. Especially, this is his first shot at it. So uh, he's four rounds in, and he was leading a moto. That's that's pretty darn good. Yeah, so I, I think I think yeah. you have to lean on that side. The, he was yeah he was ramping up here and really getting some confidence. It's pretty impressive how short of a time frame. Because I mean, look, Hayden deserves the praise, and you know we all talking about Hayden and the guy won a moto. He's awesome, but dude, Hymas was like not being left in the dust by him at all. You know, Hayden no, was no, better, and, but and, yeah. Yep. And he really wants to beat Deegan. Um, I don't think it's like a, a bitter rivalry. Yeah. But I know that that Champs wanted to beat Hayden. Like that was a big goal for him each weekend, just because they're in the same class and they are, you know, all kind of all kind of coming to this series together. Yeah. And to see Hayden excelling like that, winning a moto at Hangtown, only had to kind of fuel the fire for him. Hey, so I got a call from MX Sports guy last week. Now. I've been on this thing with the greats on the starts, you know, maybe causing some more crashes. I don't think we have enough evidence to say definitely one way or another, um, yep. you know, but I was kind of thinking about this and 40 guys and all the things I've said on the Pulp Show and everything else. So I got a call saying that MX Sports was thinking about the same thing, uh, causing crashes. So they left the ruts in front of the gates at High Point. Uh, yeah, deep. I, I read that. Right. So they kind of left it to see if that would cause some separation and, and also affect which gate a guy would pick. Because you know as a racer, you know, if somebody – like if Alex Ray's rut is everywhere off the gate, then, you know, you're not, you're not starting there, right? Um, you're, you're a vet – your vet national rut. Yeah, my, right, my vet national rut. So Fuck my ass. They're, they're thinking like, hey, it's going to be – you know, it's going to even things out, cause some separ- – not even – even things out on which greats – on where the guys want to right. go. And, and not everybody's going to get there at the same time. Nope, this nope. Way, right? So do, yeah. do you think there's anything to this? Do you, do, you, do you subscribe to this theory? Is there Will this help or hurt? Will it matter? Anything? Um, I think it will help, yes. If it's, you know, if, if you're saying is it better or worse or it's the same, like, I, I do think it will make some people's rut, you know, like if you, have a, if you have a great rut, it's going to get you there quicker. If your rut sucks, and I, we've all, anybody that's raced at that level, a terrible rut, you're just like, well, I'm screwed. Yeah. Like, I'm going to try to do the best right. I can here, but there's not much I can do. So, yeah, that's going to create separation. There's no way around that. So, if the goal and your worry is you want, you just want to create some sort of re- separation somehow without completely, you know, uh, dissolving this great start, yeah, I think it works. You know, yeah. maybe not the the most effective thing you could ever do, but 
I do think it will have an effect, yes. Right. Uh, so I, I, I think they're going to keep it for this weekend. Yeah. I, I, I'm very interested to see. I, I almost used the word worried, but um, it's not really for me to worry or determine. I am interested to see how this start plays out because I can tell you when I was racing, this start scared the living bejesus out of me. Uh, it was so fast, you know, like we're, for those who haven't heard or read, we're going back to the traditional start, right? And I don't know if you mentioned that or whatever, but it's going to be, you know, goes down a bit, hangs a left, and you basically, as a racer, you don't let off as you make that left. And everybody's tight, everybody's banging bars, and, yeah, if you crash, it's going to be a big one. And so, uh, it's a little bit scary as okay, a rider, so yeah. I, I kind of want to see how that plays out. A lot of these guys haven't ever used this start before. Okay, so I was like thinking to myself, you've lost your mind. You don't remember they changed the start for the Disney Nations, and you yep. need to go see a doctor. But no, right, right. no, they're actually changing it back. This is the first I've heard. I didn't see the track map. So Yeah, yeah, no, no, this is part of the 50th anniversary thing. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this start is gnarly. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, it is. It's, it's scary. It is, absolutely. Uh, so that's interesting to see. Yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, all right, let's go some folks. They've made a couple other track changes, too. I don't know if you saw those or not. No, I didn't see uh, any track maps, so I did not know. So Okay, yeah, yeah. so they, uh, they changed this the uh, the start, and they changed the run-up to Loraco's Leap. Yeah, we so, said it's a 90 now or something, right? Yeah, 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 but it comes off of that tabletop that connects the two sides, and you'll come down that fast straightaway. And instead of, oh, you know, yeah, doing yeah. The, the other, you'll just go just into go a fast straight. 90 yeah, up yeah. to Morocco's Leap. Oh, yeah, okay. So a lot of 250s should have the momentum now to jump in, I'm thinking. Yep. Uh, okay, let's get some phone calls here. Fly Racing Show, JT, Ben's on two. What's up, Ben? Hey, what up, Steve? Good. What's your question, man? Um, I think you guys, you and Jason, are, are sleeping on Daxton. I think, okay. Uh, him training at the goat farm. I think that dirt is super similar to red bud it's kind of like that loose like like almost sand but like dirt kind of and i just think training with the star guys with justin cooper and then okay all those guys i think he's gonna do a lot better than 10 just a saying. lot I better think, than I 10 him, okay yeah i think he's i think he'll get like seven or maybe even six okay jt where, where are we sleeping on who was it uh bennett daxon bennett Oh, Daxon. Okay, um, man, in that class, that's a that's a tall order. Uh, Think about how similar neat. that dirt is. Okay. No, no, I, I get it, I get it, but I also know there's a bunch of other really good guys that he's gonna have to race against. Oh. Yeah, JT, he uh, we well, said like twelve, twelve ish. You know. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it, I think if you ask and you pulled a bunch of these guys, like Jordan Smith would be a perfect example. Like, I think Jordan was like, "Holy crap, these guys are really good." Yeah. You know, like they're it's a lot deeper than I was thinking this was going to be. Uh, because you see guys like even like Shimoda. You know, Shimoda's a race-winning caliber guy, but if he doesn't get a good start, he's battling for his life in like seventh for a lot of yeah. the moto. So, so all right. um, yeah, I, I think anything inside the top ten would be really, really strong. If he gets like a six, hats off to him. I would just have to say I'm wrong, but that that's a tall order. For all me. right, Ben, do you want to put some wager on this? Uh, yeah, I do. All right, what, what do you want? You what want, are you talking? You want eighth or better, and I'll take I'll take ninth or worse overall? Yep. Yeah. Overall, all right. And we'll bet how oh, much? Twenty bucks on it. That. Twenty bucks. We'll bet twenty yep. bucks, and uh, so I'll put you on hold. We'll get your email, and uh, we'll figure yeah. this out. All right. Also, ask JT if he's juicing or not. He's uh, looking. He's ju- been looking real juicing or not, JT. On the juice no, or not? Juice. Juice has sugar in it. I don't. I can't have juice. <laughs> not on the juice, Brian. Stay on hold. We'll get your all info. Right. Okay. Thanks, man. All right. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Uh, all right. Uh, get. Uh, Get Ben's, I should say, get Ben's email. I'm going to get 20 bucks off this guy. Uh, you, are. you are. I, I, Yeah, I mean, I think he's good, but. Yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. no one's, like, if he gets 10th, that's great. Yeah, right? Deegan got 10th, like, and we were like, that's awesome, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian, would be a, it doesn't mean it can't happen. It would just be amazing. Yeah. Uh, Brian's on three. What's up, Brian? Uh, what's your question for Jason Thomas? Hey, guys. Uh, JT's definitely Jason. He's Jason? Yeah. Crap. Do we <laughs> steroids, HGH? What are we? What are we thinking? All of it? Uh, all of it? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm just carrot juice. juice. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be, be two thirty this time next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey guys, uh, with all these wildfires in Canada and that smoke coming down the east coast, essentially, do you think it affects these racers this weekend? Uh, we have a friend in Michigan that said, "Yeah, this Canadian fire smoke was in Michigan." So. 
Yeah, uh, I, we're not. from and, uh, Western PA, yeah. and right. it is thick. Okay. JT, what do you, what'd you say? I'm here now, and uh, it's it's really hazy. So I, you know, you can't smell it as much as you can just see it right now. Yeah. Um, there, there did get a bunch of rain today, so I'm hoping that rain kind of blows it out. And the forecast I saw, they're saying by noon on Friday that it's going to be blown out of here with that storm. So let's hope for that. All right. Yeah, it, it could it could happen though for sure. It's a good question, Brian. Yeah. I mean, it's hazy right okay, now. Cool. Okay, I'm standing Bri- here. It's Brian, do really you want hazy. a fly racing backpack? Yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah, all right. Stay on hold. You get the jump backpack. All right. Um, Are you a fly to Chicago guy or fly to South Bend guy? I'm normally a South Bend guy, um, but tickets were insane. And I would have got in at like midnight in South Bend, and I didn't want to do that because I'd probably be delayed and cranky. So, yeah, I went in Chicago this time. All right. And then driving. If I was a United guy like you and, and this was a hub for Chicago, I would just do that. But yeah. it's not for Delta, so it, it's a pain in the ass either way. Right. All right. Uh, fair enough. Hey, are we – I had a DM this week. He, he called me a, the C word, so I think he was Australian. Um, oh, wow. Champion? No, no, not that. Uh, the other okay. word that the Aussies like to run. And, it, and sometimes it's a term of, like, busting your balls and not really mean. I don't know where this guy was coming from. But anyways, he said that we're – we're not giving Hunter enough credit. Hunter's doing the more amazing thing. I'm giving him all the credit. I don't know. He said Hunter's doing the more amazing thing than Jet. Well, I, I don't think that's true. Like, he needs to slow his roll on that. Okay. Um, but but Hunter deserves a ton of credit. I have sung Hunt, Hunter's praises all season, especially since Pro Motocross. Well, he was off. he was uh, more talking me than you, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I have been very impressed. But but if it if it's the point of this conversation is that Hunter is more impressive than Jet, like he's on some sort of drugs and not juice, like I mean some sort of other drugs. Well, he was just saying like the obviously the the four fifty class is depleted a little bit and the two fifty class is supposed to be stacked and Hunter's win one every yeah. second moto, he's won every overall. The 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 bikes are closer in, in horsepower. Uh, you know, all these things and I'm just like, uh yeah, I don't know. I feel but like Jet, Jet already did all this. And he did it to Hunter last year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all right, so it's it's really hard to say. Well, Hunter, like Jet already did things to everyone and his brother last summer. You know, like so Jet's moved on. Now he's racing against former 250 champions and former 450 champions and former 450 Supercross champions, and he's just demolishing them. So, I, you know, it, okay. it shouldn't be a put Hunter down to prop Jet up thing at no, all. No, 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 no. He didn't say Hunter's better than Jet. No, he no, said no, what Hunter's I'm doing is do more that. impressive. I'm, I'm, Right. I'm just, I don't want to push Hunter down to say how awesome Jet is. I just think what Jet's doing is remarkable. Like, it's, I, I don't think he's really had to push all that hard. I, I, I was, I've been thinking about this where I've had two weeks off and, and really nothing to do. And I've only seen Jet really take it to the edge a couple of times in across eight motos. So um, I think we have a lot more to unpack with Jet Warren still to come. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I Hunter's. Yeah. Like you said, Hunter's been really impressive. He's he's almost literally yeah. had like almost the same race at all four rounds. It's literally almost yep. been the same, yep. both moto thing. It, it's crazy. Yeah. And the thing I love about what Hunter is doing right now is when he comes off the track each moto, he he looks like I used this analogy earlier today. Um, he looks like he just watched a movie that he knew the ending to already. Like, there's no emotion at all. It's just like, yeah, yeah, I, I knew I was going to win the overall. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's great, right. cool, but I already knew this was happening. Like, yeah, Truman yeah. says that all the time. It's like, I've seen this movie before. I know how this ends. Right. And that's, when I see Hunter, that's his emotion. It's like, I already knew that this was going to happen. Like, cool, yeah, it's awesome, but not not surprising. Yeah, he's Hunter's low-key cocky. He really is. He he he. Feel, I mean, I think he's got the confidence that he's better than these guys. Yeah, he. You know? And I, I used to think he was cocky, but it, to me, right now, I don't. I'm not getting cocky vibes. I'm just getting confidence. And to me, there's a difference. When I see someone that's really cocky, usually they're insecure and they don't deserve to act like that, and it really bugs me. But when it's just a inner confidence about themselves, then it to me it's portrayed differently. And he's just quiet, goes about his business. There's no emotion, good or bad. Yeah, um, it's just like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Like we're all good. Yeah. Like, it's just a, it's different, different to me. To me, cocky, and, and again, we can maybe there's an actual Webster's uh, definition. Right, to me, right, cocky right. is like, I got this. I got these guys. 
you know, yeah, and I, uh, I guess yeah. it's more of like yeah. how you like. I don't see him being a, a jerk to other no, people. Like no. that, I think what that's what differentiates it for me. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Um, but yes, he he very he's very sure of himself. Yeah. There's no question. Yep. Uh, Jose's on four. What's up, Jose? You got a question for JT? Yeah, JT, I've been really admiring your arms lately. Um, I just oh, kind of have the standard small Sounds arms. <laughs> um, been working out in the gym and just wondering what your routine is, maybe more specifically. Are you doing small reps, large weights? Because I'm generally doing three sets of 12, and I'm not really seeing the results that you are. Uh, so I do a little bit of both. Um, I'm sure most people listeners love this right now. But, um, no, this is riveting. Thing, like, and it doesn't <laughs> – right. The biggest thing, it doesn't matter if you're doing it for racing or uh, trying to look better in the mirror or whatever. You need to continue to keep your body guessing and continue to present it with new challenges. And otherwise, your body adapts, right? And then you don't continue to grow or gain anything. So if you've been doing a lot of the same, change it. Do Go to failure. Go really heavy with lower reps and change it the next week to, you know, less, set, less sets with – really high reps like i'm talking like 10 20 30 reps stuff like that you really just want your body to continue to have to adapt and that's where you're going to see the change come as your body's having to prepare for these challenges you're presenting and that can be the same for motocross too if you get in the same routine and do the same things over and over our bodies are really efficient and if it knows what's coming it's just going to prepare for that and it's like yeah i can handle that so you have to like if you've been running a lot, you need to start cycling. You need to start changing it up and do some sprints instead of motos all the time so your body gets a little bit more well-rounded and uh, on race day that can show up. All right, there you I go. Like it. I appreciate it. Hey, um, Steve, real quick, did you guys already talk about WSX? No, we did not yet. Can you just tell me a couple of thoughts? Like, is this going to be a riveting series? Do you think it's going to be exciting, or is Roxon just going to walk away with all this? This is riveting. Uh, I think it's going to be good, man. I don't know. JT's a bit of a hater on World Supercross. In my mind, you are. You are. You are. Um, I mean, I work. I work for the competing series. Yeah, that's so I, fine. I can't like sing its praises, but I don't have to be a hater. Uh, I get I'm that. I'm happy sense. these guys are making a ton of money. I promise you. You, you would be going. You would be racing World Supercross if this was ten years ago, fifteen years no ago. Doubt. You would be in the World no Supercross. I There's think it's no going to be good. I think it's Roxon, Savachi, Nichols in the 450 class, Dino. And I think Roxon's got those guys handled uh, in my mind, JT. But they yeah, are shorter sure. races, you know, so. He's the best guy. Yeah. I mean, that's why they paid him to come. Yeah, you know, like it's, yeah, it's but, not hard to figure out. You look at his performance last year. You look at his performance at High Point. You look at his track record over time. He's the best guy. So if he doesn't win, yeah, it's why they dropped the gate. But he should win. I, for, I forgot about JB. JB's in the mix too. My bad. Yep. Um, yep. 250 class should be good. Uh, Shane's a number one plate guy, but Max Anstey really riding well. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, Jose. I feel like it's it's going to be good racing. I'm, I'm down with it. I think it. Anstey's the guy to beat in 250. I yeah. really do. Yeah, probably. All right, thanks, Jose. Thank you, man. Hey, I appreciate you guys making the Thank time. You. Thank you. But even JT – even you just saying that's why they paid him to go. Just a low key hate on the no, series. No, I, I, did, I, I swear <laughs> to you on my, you know, not born son's grave that I did not mean that in any way other just, than like Roxy's the man. That's okay. why he got that deal. All right. It's because they they're not going to offer that to everybody. Yeah, I I, uh, I think that uh, it's going to be interesting to watch. And uh, hopefully I can catch some highlights. Or well, I, I don't see myself sitting down and re-watching the stream start to finish. Uh, but I do see myself watching highlights and following it that way, you know. No, uh, I don't have a problem with the series at all. Like, I take cheap shots now and again. I, I shouldn't do that. Um, but it is a great thing for a lot of these guys. Yeah. Them a living every year. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So more power to them. Uh, Aiden's got a fantasy question. What's up, Aiden? All right, first things first, though. Yep. Rawr. Yeah, Wildcat. We're... Wildcat. And uh, JT, you will Rawr. be saying you will be saying Pulpamex Wildcat Racing. I am. I gotta. I gotta make sure, like, with this because I'd love to have some fun with it. Yeah. So at our meeting tomorrow, I'm yeah, gonna, we're... like, okay, where's the wine? Like, how yeah. can I make cat noises? Like, what? Where Rawr. am I gonna get in trouble <laughs> from NBC on this? Yeah, <laughs> the cat noises might be a bit much, I don't know. but I would like, like it. Why yeah. Not? Well, can oh. we not do it? Like, that's yeah. what I want to know. Like, right. where is the line? Right. Uh, Aiden, what's your question, man? Okay. Um, we're on a road trip. We're from Australia. I just want to know, is the cell phone service at Redbud good enough to get our picks in, or do I need to be prepared 
and put them in on Friday. Well, you should always put something in Friday. Just do that anyways. But, yeah, cell service is fine from my memory, but I'm up in the tower, and so I'm higher than everybody. I think phones work a little better. I don't know it's if you're – It's good until just everybody gets there. Like, when – like it, it, the only thing that will stop you is just the amount of people sometimes, yeah. like the congestion. But other than that, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't, I don't. It's a good question. I would put something in though, man. Be careful. Yeah, it's gonna All be right. packed. Like Thank this you. place is gonna be yeah overwhelmingly right. full of people. Thanks, Aiden. We'll see you there, man. Cheers, boys. All right. Bye. Sounds good. Uh, all right, JT. Thanks for. Uh, Time on the Fly Race and Moto 60 show. And uh, yeah, Pulp Mex Wildcat Racing coming in hot um, this Rah! weekend. All right, we can stop with that. I mean, can, I, no, can I get some, before we get off, can I get some suggestions from you? What do you want to see? Do you want me to go on and make like calling like, yeah. gestures or like. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, I think, I think I would like to maybe get a little. To my bosses and see where, you know, what's going to get me fired and what's not. And then I know where to go. I'd like to state something where. Myself, Jose, and Lorenzo are on the track, and I'm pointing and making a like a, a whoop noise or a, a motion with my hands about jumping as if I'm saying, hey, man, I think you should do this on this part of the track. Oh, yeah? Like yeah. you want to be as, as a coaching role. Right, right. Like, I, like hey, man, okay. uh, back to JT. Hey, guys, I, uh, I caught Steve Mathis with his riders uh, coaching them through this section, and you can see this is working really well. Here's some pre-race footage of them going over the track. I would love that. Well, I tell you what, what like real, being 100% realistic, what we probably could do is get an interview with you during the race talking about this. Yeah, there we like, go. I think I think that could probably happen. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Something. Uh, but you know what? Yeah. We we got to turn this Boutron thing around. Like his yeah, has yeah, it, yeah, has it been, awesome. been good for Fly Racing's no. Jose Boutron? Right. Yeah. It was it has not been fifth place at Hangtown. <laughs> no. That is not what has been happening. No. Uh, why, uh, Lewis even said he's he's not printing the Boutron 450 Motocross Champion T-shirts anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe hold, hold, the, uh, yeah. hold the credit card charge on those. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. See you guys. Uh, that's Jason Thomas, Fly Racing. Vertex Pistons as well. Manufactured in Italy, the Cats and Forge Pistons are the premier choices for power and performance. Also an industry leader in manufacturing high-performance gaskets made in the USA for dirt bikes, ATVs, and more. Thank you to the folks at Vertex Pistons. Also, get Maxis Plum Creek funding, 100%. Decal Works all on board with us. That's been another edition of the Fly Racing Moto 60 Show. Travis, thank you. You're welcome. Easy on the wildcat noise, please. I will not. And also, uh, Tits Legendary. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Yeah, buddy. Good luck at golf today. Thank you. All right, we're pulling for you. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for watching. See you next week.